Okay, talking about two intelligent functions in this video, pinpoint and smart track. Function is only supported when the Matrice 300 RTK is equipped with the H20 series. Pinpoint, the name pretty much says it all there, it will replace a pin that is geographically located, either using the map or the camera, and immediately get the coordinates of that pin and also display it in 3D on your display. Smart track can identify and track different subjects while continuously acquiring the subject's location. And then location sharing, while pinpoint or smart track is enabled, location can be projected to another remote controller or viewed on the map. So we'll hop into pinpoint first, going a little more in depth here. But the first method to drop a point is via the H20 series. So you can see the white crosshair in the middle there. You wanna move that to center on your object. And in this case, we have an orange cone there as the example. And tap the icon to drop a pinpoint. So it's that diamond icon and that will drop a pin on the map. You can see you get the message pinpoint success. And then the pinpoint, which is that green diamond icon is going to appear. Second method would be to open up the map and then that black crosshair stays in the middle of the map, but you can drag the map around. Then once again, press the diamond button, and then we'll see the location of the pin updated on the map itself. Two ways the pinpoint helps. You see the horizontal distance between the drone and the pinpoint within the navigation display there. And then also the position angle between the drone and the pinpoint. So if you'd like to fly to or towards or face the pinpoint, you can easily complete all those actions. In the latest update, we've also added one click to control the gimbal camera to focus on the pinpoint. So with the press of the button, the camera will rotate and be focusing on where you've placed the pin. If the gimbal is in follow mode and the remote controller has aircraft control, the aircraft will also yaw to face the pin. You'll also be able to see the pinpoint details on the map, latitude, longitude, altitude, and here's where you can also edit and delete the pin. So go through a video example here. Go ahead and place the pin on that cone as we specified. Open up the map. Click on the pin itself to see information. See by pressing on that edit button, we can edit the height from the takeoff, absolute altitude, And then just simulating flying away from the pin, whether this is an inspection, hazmat scene. Think of the pin as somewhere you've marked that we are potentially wanting to come back to later on. So you can see at this point that blue button in the top left has appeared since we've gone ahead and dropped a pin. And then by placing it where we were previously at the cone, we can press the blue button, camera goes back, is now focused on the cone. So very useful there. Moving into the smart track side of things. You're gonna to need to enter the zoom view before starting smart track. You can click on zoom on the left side. Tap the icon, the circle with the dot in the middle to open the smart track function. You get a notification starting smart track. Smart track function can automatically detect people's car and boats. So the related subject will be marked with the yellow circle. You click on one of those yellow circles to start smart tracking. If you want to track an object that's not automatically recognized, you can tap, hold, and draw a rectangle around said object. And we'll show a video of that a little bit later on. Here's a video here. You can see tap on the yellow circle on the truck, and the smart tracking has begun. Switch over to the wide camera view there, and you can just see how far away the smart tracking is in that case. Able to pause the tracking by hitting the blue button on the display. You can also hold the pause button on the controller. And smart track has two gimbal modes, just like the drone itself. We have gimbal follow and gimbal free. 
First off, talking about gimbal follow. So if you look at the picture of the drone there, the aircraft and the gimbal are both facing forward. And in smart tracking, as the gimbal was yaw, you can kind of think like spinning like a top to the left or the right, the gimbal is gonna go ahead and follow and stay pointed towards the front of the aircraft. And this allows for orbiting around an object while being tracked, and also the aircraft legs will not interfere. So looking at this graphic on the right, this would be your typical mode two controls, right? On the left side, we have the left stick, right side, right stick, right, we go left stick up and down for the drone. When we are using gimbal follow and smart tracking, some of these rules change. Our right stick, instead of being forward and backwards, is going to be towards and away from the subject because when we go left and right, we are orbiting the subject instead of going left and right directly from the drone. And then with our left stick going left and right, that's gonna move what we're tracking to the left or right of the screen. The drone's not going to turn as normal. So if you're in this situation and you want to go back to mode two controls, that's when you'd want to pause the smart tracking or just turn smart tracking off. And you can see the graphic here on the right, the trajectory of the drone, you can see is a circle as it was orbiting what it was smart tracking a person here in this case. On video form here, you can see us start smart tracking. And then when we switch over the map and pushing the right stick to the right, the drone is going to be orbiting whatever it is smart tracking. So just be aware based on your gimbal settings, it's going to change your control inputs while smart tracking. Your other option is gimbal free mode. So if we look at the drone up there, you can see the gimbal is now yawed to the left. It's not facing directly forward in line with the drone. And eventually if the pitch is far enough up and the gimbal continues to rotate, the leg could potentially interfere with the camera. So just something to be aware of. You can certainly rotate the drone so the leg isn't in the way. And if the gimbal is pitched down as it is in many scenarios, the leg won't necessarily be a factor. But just something to be aware of here in gimbal free mode, controls are going to be the same, but potentially have some other factors that might interrupt the tracking. With both of these modes, the Matrice 200 RTK is not going to fly automatically. When we're looking at smart tracking with the follow mode, the aircraft is going to yaw left and right, but in gimbal free mode, just the gimbal will be yawing left and right. So just kind of reviewing how smart track can be helpful. One, it's automatically rotating the gimbal. Two, the subject's going to be located in center of the app screen without having to do any work. The camera zoom ratio is automatically adjusted to view the subject. You're able to adjust focal length manually on screen or using the RC control wheel if you'd like the view to be a little more zoomed in or zoomed out. You can open laser rangefinder to get subject position via the RNG button or look at the map. You can switch to the wide or thermal camera while smart track is being used. Just need to realize that the zoom camera is what's doing the tracking. So in this case, right, you see some obstacles right there. If the subject being tracked was to go behind something, the camera will continue searching and maybe you wanna pause the smart tracking at that point because it can't visually see what's being tracked. And then when you pause it, the smart tracking is still going to be running. So if you were to see uh, the car, person, or whatever you're trying to smart track again, you could click on the yellow circle again or draw that box. And then as we covered a little bit premature on my end, you can check the map to get the dynamic subject position information as well. Another situation, let me show you the ability to draw the rectangle around the object here would be an inspection side. So you can see it doesn't necessarily have to be a car or person for our subject. And if we want to look at a different part of the component, we can now worry about just flying the aircraft while the camera stays auto zoomed, auto focused, and keeps that subject in the center of the screen. So just a little different use case for smart track than some may usually think of. And that covers pinpoint and smart track. Thanks for tuning in.